Hi all, I have an absolutely fascinating game to show you by David Grosvenor, Leela ID 507 against Stockfish 7 in a tournament he arranged. A very fast one minute uh, for 40 moves time control. So Leela was on a GTX 1060 graphics card, Stockfish 7 on a 2.80 gigahertz 4 CPU setup. E4 for Leela, and we have a Sicilian defense from Stockfish. C3. Now this could transpose, by the way, into from a, a Smith Morogamic. We have Knight F6 here, E5, Knight D5, Knight F3, Knight C6. This was the end of the book, and we see here the move Bishop C4, E6, White Castles, Bishop E7, D4. So this is why this this position I've seen quite a few times before playing the Smith Morrow Gambit with white uh, by transposition. So it's very interesting territory for me. And it's interesting to know what Livebook thinks and what the kind of virtual Hubble telescope of Leela Chess, if she can give us insights, new insights into this position. Uh, you know, Demis Sapis talked about AI giving us fresh new insights in different domains. Now here I'm just intrigued because Queenie 2 is a standard book move. Black castles. Now a rarer choice here. Usually players with white with white statistically it seems play knight c3. Now I'm not a total fan of this move, which is the top choice in line book, because there's structural damage here. But I can take on c3 and take on e5, for example, and this position. There's things to play uh, for, like this backward c pawn. If the attack can be neutralized black's got a lot of positional trump cards and it can lead to just misery for white and yet this this is seems seems to be the most popular choice knight c3 but uh, so leader's choice is very interesting to me rook d1 just supporting the center for the moment we have knight a5 uh, as an example instead of hitting the bishop here you can you can see the the annotated pgn as well in the pin comment if you look at the pin comment section Let's have a look at instead of d takes here, this position is okay. Mike can actually give up the bishop and hit d5 there with the knight. This is nice for white, small edge. So knight a5, and the bishop goes to d3, and you might think this is a major concession. This is why this whole line isn't popular in life book, because off the knight before, what do we do with this poor bishop? It's it's going to be kicked around, whatever happens. If it goes to e4, then there's d5. There's no Greek gift here. If it goes to b5, then there's a6. The, the knights are going to grab. The, the knights are going to grab this poor bishop. Whatever happens, if it lands on c2, the knight could grab it. So what does Leela do here after knight b4? Simple. She just plays knight c3. And you might think, hang on, isn't this position empty of attacking opportunity? And I've said this of some Vichy Anand games. Sometimes Vichy Anand gives up a bishop of a certain colour, and then all of a sudden there's gigantic pressure later on the other colour of the bishop. Now, logically, the light square bishop wouldn't have been useful for a dark square attack. You'll agree? In general, it wouldn't have been useful for a dark square attack. But does white seem to have a monstrous dark square attack at this stage it doesn't seem so and in fact uh, stockfish played d5 here which I find slightly surprising closing up the center it's almost giving white a free hand now intuitively we, we can feel that that there's almost a free hand here but you know black's got some positional trump cards as well here and if there's no attack then what's the big deal closing the center like this uh, for me more worrying would be d takes e5 and I've, I've checked this out. The research after knight takes e5, it seems this position uh, might be okay here after b6 to play queen g3. This might give white a tangible advantage. Uh, so a couple of engines agree on this. Uh, Stockfish and Houdini agree on this idea of queen g3 with the idea of bishop h6. And here, b4, this is a an interesting line which you can check out. So knight c6, for example, Knight e4, and it gets a bit dangerous for black. Like here, 
this is actually winning the exchange for white tactically in this continuation because of bishop e7 hitting b4 and fa that's a, that's an interesting tactical line so anyway i i would be concerned more with d takes e5 myself so why is this such a big deal is there really a massive dark square attack which we don't know about here this is why Leela is very very important she can explore this position the first move is very logical Alakine would approve he's often transferring knights to the king side there's either f4 or g3 here it's these knights that can with the bishop cooperate quite well these three pieces would like to combine I think ideally for a dark square king side attack and with this attacking pawn wedge in the center the center tone of this game is, is set for an attack the undertone bishop d7 and now h4 this is a standard Leela device which engines often under, underestimate it does support things like knight g5 it looks like why can't this pawn be taken well as, as humans we know that this is dangerous to take this pawn and it, it wasn't because g3 and then we just nudged the, the king because this diagonal is closed that's one perk of the closed center this this kind of pawn sack is more natural and less likely to be punished on the diagonal this could be really dangerous for black later with rook h1 so actually stockfish decided not to take that and played h6 but then we have knight f4 and things are starting to build up look at the little pawn chain here on dark squares the h4 move was threatening things like knight g5 so maybe that's why it was prompted to h6 but now we've got an exposed pawn chain so we have knight f4 and in fact to emphasize the exposed pawn chain a knight coming to h5 looks exceptionally dangerous if we look at bishop takes h4 here uh, knight h5 this is a this is just be crushing basically knight h2 for example taking here is an absolute murder after knight g4 knight coming into f6 threatening mate black would end up having to give up the queen in this example continuation massive advantage for white so we have king h8 g4 it seems white's pieces these three pieces are having a dark square kingside party now in the absence of the light square bishop the light square bishop gave itself up voluntarily to a knight sitting on d3 does not moving and the rest of the, the team is having a great time now queen b6 is played uh, if we look at this again this is just natural for white to play king g2 for rook h1 there's no punishment on the diagonal because the center is closed uh, so say this position rook h1 this is just devastating stuff knight h5 for example taking it can just smash through for white after bishop takes this is an example a crushing line uh, just to illustrate so queen b6 was played white's having a free hand here knight h5 these dark square pawns are feeling scared now rook g8 and even more scared after this next move uh, can you guess what white played here if I give you five seconds to pause the video okay knight g5 threatening mate in one and also knight f7 I'll just show you like knight takes f7 is ch nice checkmate or queen h7 so uh, so these two frats how does black handle it well black took on g5 with the pawn bishop takes g5 is no problem we're just gonna just take it and still king g2 and rook h1 so uh, black took here and we have h takes g5 and basically <laughs> white is ready with king g2 and rook h1 there rook gc8 queen h3 threatening knight f6 checkmating king g8 guess what the other plays here if I give you five seconds to pause the video knight f6 check yeah if the king moves then there's queen h8 checkmate so bishop takes f6 is played g takes the king can't move because of queen h8 again this pawn is stopping king e7 king stuck there we have rook takes c1 this looks rather desperate basically white's plan here is just king g2 and rook h1 and queen h8 mate if black's not doing anything so this starts to look a bit desperate for black indeed 
to try and stop this basic idea. King g2, rook h1, queen h8. Giving up the exchange on rook doesn't matter here. And stockfish crumbles with queen takes d4 in a desperate try to delay the mating pattern. So this gives up the queen. The rook comes back. The knight gives itself up to try and delay things. Typical computer delay stuff. And here it was adjudicated as a win for white. Clearly, it's totally and utterly winning a queen up. So for me, this game is fascinating from a few perspectives. The most popular move in live book encouraging structural damage, often leading to bleak positions, uh, was bypassed by Leela with rook d1, keeping the structure intact, not minding losing the light square bishop. Fantastic prelude to a dark square party with the other pieces. You can often see that in games. We've seen that in games on Vichy and on this channel in Rapid Chess games we covered. He sometimes gives up a bishop, a dark square bishop, and has a light square attack and vice versa. It's the other pieces that can really inflict the damage on the color complex. Here, the knights really intensified the pressure. With the closed center, it was more possible to do the pawn storm without any diagonal backfire against the white king. All in all, I believe an impressive positional attacking game, which we can all learn from. I hope you agree. Comments, questions, likes, shares appreciated. Thanks very much.